This is ominous. The car we're going to collect my broken car in appears to be broken. Say hello, Jace. Hello, Jace. I've got my tea on the roof. Hey, is that fruit not a tea shelf? Giant tea shelf on the Vauxhall Omega. Long time viewers of the channel will recognise Jace as the guy who bought the Rover 214 about a year ago now, almost. Uh, saved it and gave it a new lease of life. That car was a little bit little for Jace, but Jason also bought this Omega, which you may remember from a chat video back in June, I think. Um, still going strong, but good news, the Mini is part of this MOT. We're going to go grab coffee and a Mini. Jace, how's the uh, Vauxhall going? Like a scolded cat. <laughs> Clawing of face, running around, smashing stuff, that kind of thing. Yeah, and you should see it climbing up the curtains. Well, that'd be a sight to see. Hey. <laughs> we think it might have a slight blow on the exhaust, so maybe over the weekend we'll get on a jack and have a quick look. Might be able to patch something if need to be. So good news on the Mini. We've got a text from Trevor saying that the MOT had passed. It had sailed through with no airbag issues whatsoever. I said, what, did you have to seat out and repair it? He said, nope, I just flashed it clear and the problem went away. So that's kind of irritating. Well, great news that it happened so cheaply and easily, but kind of irritating. I couldn't do it with a cheapy Amazon one and spent a couple of months just fiddling with wires under the seat to no avail. But hey, car's coming back. There was one fly in the ointment though, because having cleared the airbag light and given it a once over to make sure it was gonna go through the MOT, no problems. They were just driving it around to the MOT testing bay and a coil spring broke. So, <laughs> to have two new rear springs, which is something I wasn't counting on. Had it happened at home, I'd have done it myself, but because it was already there midway to an MOT, they did it there in the garage. So at least it's done, and we can drive the car home, and also I get to drive in the Omega a little bit, which is always a, a treat. Yay! I hate this junction, because both of these two right lanes go over to the motorway, which is over there. But the people in front of us right now should stay roughly in this lane, but they don't. They tend to drift across to where the right lane is. If you're in the right lane, they cut you up. And it happens almost every day. People have no lane discipline on this junction. Do they, Jace? No, they do not. Excuse me, I've just got to drift over to the right lane. <laughs> you can sort of see how they do it, but you see, look, they just have. That Peugeot and that black Lexus have both drifted to the right lane. Jace here has stayed in the correct lane, and just followed the road around, but these two doofuses have just drifted laneward to the right without indicating. So from the big Vauxhall to the little Mini. I'll tell you what, the lanes around here are filthy. <laughs> this car was a bit dusty from being in the garage when I pulled it out the other day, but look at that mud on this thing now, it's revolting. But hey, that doesn't matter because the good thing is, inside this car there is an MOT pass, yes, it's legal again. I can take it for a drive. We've made it a few short miles down a regular road. It's no great hard shake, but it's time for coffee. Definitely. Oh, coffee? Definitely coffee. And muffin. A muffin. Yeah. Warm up and wake up first. And we're now becoming a traditional splash of heat power on the way home from the MOT test. Hooray! Celebration, like champagne for a car.
bit of a shame about the rear coil springs. Trevor was saying that they had a pre-inspection with the car on the ramp and the rear springs looked rusty but like they were pass. They drove the car off the ramp and around the corner to the MOT testing station and as they just drove around the corner there was a point and the spring just sheared which is a problem. Springs these days don't seem to be made that as well as they used to be. They go rusty very quickly and then shear very suddenly and that's when they looked under the car at the other spring it looked in about the same condition as the one that broke had so it made sense to do both at the same time it wasn't massively expensive at least clearing the um, airbag fault notice the airbag fault is not showing anymore bear in mind what i know about these cars and being in the wire register club i'm very aware that these lights tend to flash on and off like christmas lights quite frequently and there was a very good chance that light may have come back on again on the way home from the MOT. <laughs> you know, it just stays off long enough to get a pass. It's not uncommon with these cars. But it hasn't, so that's good. And the car is driving very nicely on its new rear springs, so it's all win-win-win. I'm a happy bunny. So, of my turn of the century hot hatch collection of the Rover, the Alpha and this Mini, two out of three are now roadworthy. Although I have found somewhere to get the Brembo brake lines for the Alpha, Trevor was saying it would actually be cheaper and possibly even better quality if he just made them in-house at the garage. I don't want to turn this into a car detailing channel, but driving cars around the countryside in the wintertime does have one inevitable consequence. So, here's a bit more slow-mo snow foam. Cue the montage. I've got to do something about the roof or the ceiling of the garage where this car lives because little plastic putty things keep dropping out the ceiling and sticking to the roof. Very annoying. driven 120 miles on a Saturday morning from Kent up to Warwickshire, somewhere sort of near Daventry, Coventry-ish. Well hopefully around the next corner or two it's going to be a Greasy Spoon Cafe and when I pull in the car park there's going to be a dozen Rover Tomcats waiting, well not waiting for me particularly, but waiting for everyone to arrive so we can do our Rover Tomcat convoy. So fingers crossed around this next bend, what was that? Don't just hit the windscreen. Around this next corner, there's going to be a cafe. It says cafe on that wall. Where is the cafe? Aha, uh -huh. this looks promising. Yes, this looks suitably. The destination. I've got the clutch stuck to the floor. See the right. <laughs> Let's done it again. Don't stop, folks, because I can't get the car to move again. Hooray, Rovers! made it up to whatever this cafe is called up in the middle of nowhere and there are two four six eight eight or nine tomcats here and a lotus ready for well it's quite an epic convoy really you just don't see two of these in the same place ever i mean if you see one of these in traffic and you're in one as well it's worth writing home about seeing this many in one shot this is incredible this one's got paint like mine should have oh yeah and there's a Lotus Elite. Mm. Apparently, about an hour ago, it didn't have tax or a fuel pump. 
and he's leading the way. So fingers crossed we make it to the other end. The fun begins. I used the wipers and they banged into the GoPro and even though I freed them off the GoPro they've snagged themselves into each other so the wipers can't park anymore. I'm hoping this hasn't caused any major problems and just shorted out the wiper motor or anything dumb like that. That would be a problem if it has. I thought I'd put that GoPro outside the arc of the wipers but I obviously didn't.
<laughs> <laughs> Pretty decent selection of Tomcats here, 11 of them. This one is going for the rat look. This one was quite clean before the roads. Standard lowered. <laughs> you can tell this car didn't do the route because it's still very, very clean indeed. Like all the rest of ours, which are now filthy. So 11 cars have made it here, two now have to bonnet up. I'm assuming people are just curious and not actually broken. And they keep coming. It's car number 13, I think. You will not see this many Tomcats again in the same place. We have a bonnet up and the car's not broken. It's very smart. <laughs> It's a relatively quick roundup of the day because it's getting dark really fast. But that was yet another very fun Christmas do for the um, Rover Coupe Club. And then he concentrate on this junction for a second. I'm making a U-turn across a dual carriageway, which is great. Coupe Club isn't the biggest club in the world because there aren't, well, that many cars left. As we just had in a quiz question, there's 1,433, I think the answer was, uh, coupes left in the world. So yeah, it's a fairly exclusive club to be part of, but a really nice bunch of people. So it's always really great to come down here and do the Christmas party and see the people at the shows. So thanks guys for putting the Christmas do on. That was just amazing to see so many coupes in one place because you just never see them around anymore. While I've been driving today, I've been trying to work out the fuel economy. When I set off, the gauge was just below halfway, and I put four gallons of petrol in, which is 25 quid. And I'm back to exactly where I started, and we've done about, well, it was 120 miles to the first venue, and about, I should have clocked it, I wasn't looking, 20 or 30 miles. So I'm looking at maybe just over 30 miles per gallon off this car. And some of that was driving slowly in road work, some of it was just on the motorway, and some of it was spirited driving on the country lanes. So a good average of around 30 miles per gallon off a 130,000 mile car from not quite 30 years ago. So for the time being, this concludes my series of Generation Y and Millennial Age uh, coupes and hot hatch type stuff. Uh, as this is now fixed and working and working well, the Mini is MOT'd and working well. The Alpha isn't gonna move for a couple of weeks, so we'll forget about that. We'll go back to the Mercedes and the V8 for a while, do some stuff on that. The Rover 2000 needs to look in as well. I haven't touched the Rover 2000 in quite a while. If this bit of video is being watched by the people from the club, well done indeed to the dad and his son who came to the meet with a recently bought 216 coupe. It looked really nice and they won the best presented car after a lot of elbow grease. It's a car I nearly bought for the Hyundai Cheap Car Challenge. So it was really quite fun to see that car in the, in the metal um, a few months later. And now to know that I would have got a really good car had I gone and dropped my money into it. Because for the money I spent on MOTing and fixing the Hyundai, I could have just gone and bought that Rover. But it would have been less exciting though, wouldn't it? So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little gad about in some 20 to 30 year old cars and stuff that's happened. 
If you haven't already hit like and subscribe, then please do. It makes a massive difference to the channel. It means YouTube rates this kind of stuff much higher and shows it to more people so the channel can grow and I can keep on doing it. So if you haven't hit like and subscribe already, then please do. I'm going to do lots more Rover stuff over the summer as well as all the other things that are coming. Oh, there's lots of stuff, honestly. I need petrol. I've just realised I need petrol and there's a petrol station over there, so... In 1.1 <coughs> miles, at the roundabout, take the second exit. I'll end this video on a forecourt. Exit roundabout onto A43. No, I'm not. I'm going to the petrol station. Shush. Turn right. <coughs> I'll do for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.